As far as I can tell, Father Flick's version of Roman Catholic manhood is uh, giving speeches in a guitar or a cigar lounge in Coeur d'Alene, which I do believe he may have uh, changed that venue, hopefully, <laughs> to a uh, house. I do think he has quit that. But I do think it's still in his heart because he still talks a lot about these wine and cheese socials as Father John Mosier embraced these wine and cheese socials. And we know from St. Paul's writings that you're supposed to eat at home. You're really not supposed to party at the church. And the fact that all these churches are creating party rooms and upholding them and not giving them to the poor. The people that really need a soup kitchen, maybe the single mothers need a place that they can bring their children, a safe place that they can uh, be converted to the faith. Maybe these halls should be converted into second chapels for uh, more masses being said, maybe a quiet meditation room uh, for saying the lay people to do quiet works like acts of charity, making quilts, so to speak, or making rosaries and doing things that are pious and pure instead of just turning it into a complete donut hall party room because even John Mosier and the other priest, the former priest at uh, St. Pope Pius X, the diocesan Novus Ordo Church, not to be confused with the SSPX, but they both cried out saying that there was so much gossiping and online, uh, you know, back talk and slandering going on uh, from the lay people that they had to actually write about it, but they didn't really claim that they were the instigators of it by forming all these cults by all their wine and cheese socials and by elevating the heretics in the church. People they know don't take communion regularly or in a state of grace. Um, lay people, they place themselves into the hierarchy of church who really don't care about God and don't go to confession and then they wonder why the social order of the church has become usurped or out of control and this has gone on for years but also in the saint joan of arc catholic church we have father gordon saying one thing and doing another we have him saying don't go to the schisms but then when you turn the bulletin over a schismatic uh who runs angelo's restaurant is uh advertised <laughs> on the back of the bulletin and so Father Gordon is shaking hands with the schismatics while he's telling the lay people don't. And I think it all has to do with money and power because this Angelo's restaurant is uh, worked into the Freemasonry uh, Republic uh, Party, Republican Party of the town. And that can be dangerous today because there's a lot of... Uh, power-hungry people in the Republican Party, and they really do not care about the Ten Commandments anymore, and they really don't care about stopping abortion and all these things, and unless Angelo's, if he's really calling them out, but instead he's just placing his ad <laughs> in the paper, which seems like he's just partnering with their dull minds, and we've really got to call this out if we are true Catholics. He's Instead of just placing his ad in the paper of the St. Joan of Arc and also the People's Pen paper, he needs to, first of all, become a true Roman Catholic and end his schisms. But also, he needs to start calling out them on the sins of the town, the abortion, all the Freemasonry going on in Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls, the heretics in the church, including Father Gordon and Father Flick. He's really got to grow up. And a lot of rich people, they simply don't want to.